The following is a presentation of the Liberty Flames Sports Network from Van Wagner. Welcome to the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report from Van Wagner on the Liberty Flames Sports Network. Flames Clubhouse Report is brought to you by Fink's Jewelers. Since 1930, trusted for generations. Stay tuned for the latest views on Liberty Flames baseball, a look around the ASUN conference, and we'll catch up with Flames head coach Scott Jackson. Now, here's the voice of Flames baseball, Nick Pierce. Hello once again, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report. And here this week, it is time to lift the lid on ASUN conference play. The Flames return to their home ballpark as Liberty will entertain the University of North Alabama this weekend in a three-game series from Worthington Field at Liberty Baseball Stadium in Lynchburg. Looking forward to that. Nick Pierce back here with you again this week as we look ahead to the series and recap everything from Flames baseball this past week. Liberty riding a hot streak right now. Five-game winning streak coming into the weekend and the Flames coming off of a midweek win over the University of North Carolina. Beat the number 18 Tar Heels on Tuesday night, 8-7 to at Boshamer Stadium in Chapel Hill. Game where the Flames offense really came to life and then kind of had to hold on at the end with the bullpen, but excellent job in back end of relief for the trio of Mason Fluarty, Tyler Germanowski, and then Landon Riley getting his third save of the season. But the Flames really exploded early on against that Carolina pitching staff, which was uh, really nice to see. Liberty's offense uh, started to kind of break out at times over the weekend. Last week against UCF as Liberty swept the Knights in Orlando. That was actually the first road series sweep for the Flames in a little more than three years. you got to go all the way back to 2017, the last time the Flames swept a road series. That was at Longwood, a big South series at the time. So, Flames got it going last weekend, a five-game winning streak now. We mentioned the game at Carolina on Tuesday. Three-run homer for Logan Matthew, the difference in that one. Fourth inning, three-run shot that gave the Flames a 7-3 to lead at that time. They'd add another run later. But, uh, yeah, Logan Matthew and this offense really starting to click here a little bit. I mean, if you look at Matthew over the last four ball games, he's got three home runs, leads the team in homers, leads the team in RBIs, leads the team in runs scored. He's driven in nine runs now and scored nine. So you get him going right in the middle of that lineup along with a Will Wagner who's had back-to-back multi-hit games now. A lot to like in that Flames batting order at the moment. Speaking of Matthew, we're going to catch up with him a little bit later on on this week's edition of the Flames Clubhouse Report. We'll also visit with the head coach of the Flames, Scott Jackson, to get his weekly thoughts heading into the series. But Liberty returning home after playing 10 of its first 12 on the road. The Flames are 2-0 and in their home ballpark this year, and they have really enjoyed playing at home over the last three seasons. Liberty, in its last 44 ball games, has won 37 of them at Worthington Field at Liberty Baseball Stadium. So a very gaudy win-loss record for the Flames in their home park. And taking on a North Alabama ball club this weekend that has quite honestly struggled. They are off to their worst start ever at 1-9, and nine, a team that is in its uh, third year of a four-year transition from Division Two to Division One. UNA, though, a ball club that traditionally has had a lot of success And, you know, this has got to be really tough for them, especially the folks that have been around that program for the last, you know, 10, 20, even 30 years and go back to the days of Mike Lane in the 80s when they were going to the NCAA tournament at the Division II level, went to a World Series under Coach Lane, and then Mike Keene, who's been there now for 12 years as the head coach, second winningest head coach in UNA history. And, you know, they're just going through a really tough time right now as they transition to the A-Sun and to Division I baseball. So the Flames this weekend have an opportunity to extend their winning streak, but certainly you've always got to respect the opposition. And UNA coming in here, I'm sure, with a chip on its shoulder and wanting to play better and wanting to come in here and try to knock off the Flames. So we'll have to see how it shakes out. But Liberty has only played UNA three other times. That was a three-game series at Lane Field in Florence, Alabama. Go back to 2019, Liberty's first year in the ASUN Conference. The Flames took two out of three from the Lions on that weekend. 
course, Liberty went on to win the ASUN Conference Championship that season. But that's it. That's the uh, only time, that's the only history that these two ball clubs have with one another. Obviously not having played last year, UNA was scheduled to come to Lynchburg. This year, two teams will play a pair of three-game series. This one in Lynchburg this weekend, and then coming up again in April, the Flames will make a return trip to Florence to take on North Alabama April 16th through the 18th. Should have nice weather at the ballpark here this weekend. Coming up a little later on, we'll take a look at the starting pitching matchups and tell you a little bit more about the media coverage here for this weekend's ball games. But right now, let's take a look around the rest of the A-Sun Conference. Busy week around the rest of the league. Now it's time for this week's A-Sun Notebook. This week's A-Sun Notebook includes a return to earth of sorts for the Stetson Hatters Baseball Club. They started 10-0, best start in school history, but since then they have lost four straight. The Hatters were swept in a weekend series last week at home against USF. University of South Florida beat Stetson 3-2 last Friday, 10-5 on Saturday, and 6-5 on Sunday. Then the Hatters went to Gainesville this past Wednesday to take on the Gators at the new Florida ballpark. Built a 5-0 lead after the first two innings before the Gators came storming back to take that ball game 10-7. So it's been a rough week for Steve Tremper's ball club now 10 and 4 it doesn't get any easier as Stetson heads to Alabama for a three-game series this weekend against the 12 and 2 Crimson Tide the Flames are really the hottest club in the league right now Liberty winners of five straight and the only A-Sun club to pick up a midweek win this week knocking off number 18 North Carolina Elsewhere in the league, Lipscomb looks to get back to play this weekend after the Bisons have had to sit for the last two weeks with COVID-19 positive tests in their program. The Bisons will get back to it this weekend at number seven, Georgia, for a three-game series in Athens. Meanwhile, Florida Gulf Coast looks to stop a two-game losing skid as the Eagles play host to those same USF Bulls. Bulls coming in at 7-3 after beating up on Stetson last week. FGCU enters with a 7-4 record. That should be a pretty good series. Jacksonville started the season 0-8. The Dolphins have won their last three, but they've got a big test coming up this weekend as they travel to number 5, Florida. Three-game series in Gainesville. The Gators are 11-3. University of North Florida continues a four-game split series with the UCF Knights coming up this weekend. Those two clubs met in a midweek contest on Wednesday. The Knights pounded the Ospreys 10 to nothing. They'll play game two of that series coming up tonight in Orlando. They'll meet again Saturday in Jacksonville and then Sunday back in Orlando for the completion of the four-game set. UCF preseason top 25 checking in at 4-8. and eight. UNF is 4-9. and nine. And the only other A-Sun Conference series happening this weekend, Bellarmine travels to Kennesaw State. Game one coming up at 4 o'clock on Friday. The Knights are just 3-7 and seven after dropping an 8-1 to one midweek ball game at Eastern Illinois. Meanwhile, the Owls are 7-5, and five, although they've lost their last two. Most recently, a 12-11 slugfest at Western Carolina this past Wednesday. That's a look at your A-Sun notebook here this week. And we're just getting started with this week's Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report. Stay with us when we come back on the other side. We're visiting with Flames first baseman Logan Matthew. This is the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report presented by Fink's Jewelers from Van Wagner on the Liberty Flames Sports Network. Back-to-back -back Cure Bowl champion. Explode! The one! Ranked 17th in the nation. Wins over Virginia Tech and Syracuse. The Flames wrap up the hook. Flames Nation, we're just getting started. Be at Williams Stadium this fall for Liberty Flames football. Head coach Hugh Freeze and the Flames are looking to win their third straight bowl game. Season tickets start at just $70, a savings of 51% from single game prices. Get yours now at lufootball.com. Now, back to the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report, presented by Fink's Jewelers. The 1-1. Swung on and a fly ball, belted deep right field. That ball is gone for Logan Matthew. A three-run jack in the fourth. And Liberty leads it 7-3 over the Tar Heels.
Big home run for Logan Matthew on Tuesday night as the Flames took down the number 18 Carolina Tar Heels. And this week on the Clubhouse Report, Logan joins us here. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, big home run uh, the other night, as I said, but uh, big momentum swing in that ball game as you guys were able to pull away with an 8-7 to seven win. The home runs are coming in bunches for you now. You've hit three in the last four games. You now lead the club in runs scored and in RBIs as well. Uh, how good are you feeling up there at the plate right now? Yeah, I mean, consistency is the number one thing for me right now, and um, right now it's going good. So hopefully, I can I can keep it up. You know, the the ball seeing I'm seeing beach balls right there at the at the plate right now. So it's a good feeling. Hopefully, it can last. Yeah, great feeling for the ball club right now too. You guys have won five in a row, and after a little bit of a sluggish start, it looks like some things are starting to click. Uh, does it feel that way? Yeah, most definitely. You know, the uh, the at bats are getting a lot tougher for us, and you know, it's the the lineup is starting to lengthen, and that's all that Coach Jackson's been preaching is we need length in the lineup, and we're we're starting to develop that that attribute, and we're we're feeling good. Flames first baseman Logan Matthew joining us here on the Clubhouse Report. You know, looking back over the last year, it's been anything but normal. And then to compound that, you had to deal with a knee injury as well. So coming back off of that, not getting to play summer ball, and then getting out here right into a competitive season, I mean, how tough was that? How challenging was that for you, but then also for some of these hitters without, you know, having played a, a full season last year? Yeah, um, you know, coming into the season, we, we knew that, uh, Coach Jackson likes to schedule tough opponents and, you know, we, the team likes that, you know, we, we want to go up against the best and, you know, coming back off of over a year, not competing, you know, it's, it was just over excitement and now it's just joy, joy to be back on the field and just being competing with my brothers and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. You think it's taken the bats a little bit more time to kind of catch up to the pitching? I mean, it, it feels like it normally happens that way every year, but not just for this team, but, I mean, you look around the country. I mean, North Carolina struck out 21 times against Virginia Tech last week. I mean, does it kind of feel like that, you know, it's it's taken a little more time for everybody to kind of catch up a little bit? Yeah, um, possibly. I mean, you know, with the with COVID happening and everything and, you know, the, the MLB draft coming in when it's only five rounds, you know, we have guys, pitchers that probably would have went out of high school coming to college now. And, you know, you got those pitching staffs, you know, like TCU and, you know, even us, you know, we have we have an unbelievable pitching staff. And you know, I think that plays a lot into like the at-bats that we have. That we're going to face a lot tougher pitching uh, than we normally do. And, you know, that's that's just the part of the game. Yeah, it's exciting, though, isn't it? It's it's a lot a lot of excitement, you know, going up against uh, against those TCU pitchers and where, where they have like 18 pitches, it seems like, you know, every ball moving in different directions. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Flames first baseman Logan Matthew joining us on the clubhouse report here. We mentioned your knee injury last year, kind of a, a freak fluke thing that happened to you in the preseason. How tough was it coming back from the injury? What was the most challenging part? Uh, you know, the, mo the most challenging part for me um, was just over the summer. You know, I was, I was living by myself down here and, you know, rehab every day and, you know, that, that really stressed, um, you know, if I still wanted to like play, that really tested my ability of if I still wanted to play baseball and, you know, I had to dig, dig deep down and see if I really wanted to play and, you know, I pushed through it and hopefully I still do want to play. So I'm still here. Yeah. How, how tough was that? I mean, gosh, I mean, during a pandemic, a shutdown, you know, you're not at home, you're not playing baseball anywhere. You're just here going to rehab every day. I mean, how, you know, how challenging was that for you not even baseball, but just on a personal level. Yeah. Um, you know, just, just everyday life. It was, it was just like, I was stuck inside, nothing to do. And the, the people that got me through were, were my roommates actually, Will and Brandy, you know, even though they weren't here, I had conversations with them and they stressed me how important I was to the team. And, you know, that, that kept me, kept me pushing through the tough times. Logan Matthew joining us here on the clubhouse report. You mentioned Brandon Rohrer. How's he doing? I know he had surgery uh, last week. I think it was uh, uh, getting a little bit closer to rejoining the club, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, he, he was at practice today. I don't think he, he did much, but I mean, he was there for our team. Um, you know, he, he helped out in every way he could and, you know, he's looking good. He only has two black eyes now. He looks normal. <laughs> What's that house like? I mean, you mentioned him and then uh, Will Wagner in there. I mean, what what's what's that household like uh, to live in oh it, it's it's a lot of fun we, we prank each other all the time um but you know once once we get home it's it's nothing but you know video games and just a lot of fun you know it's people come over and just have a fun time and it's it's just a lot of fun what video games are you playing oh it's only it's strictly call of duty right now you know we're <laughs> waiting for we're waiting for mlb the show to come out and then we'll, we'll start grinding on that Who's the cook in the house, if there is one? Or are you guys, I mean, you're 
on the road so doggone much, you probably don't have time to cook. Yeah, you, you know what? It was me for the longest time, and then once Cade started getting close to us, he started coming over, and he'd start cooking our food, and we'd all have family feast together. So it's been a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Uh, looking ahead to this weekend, as we're joined here by Flames first baseman Logan Matthew, you got a ball club coming in here that's that's one in nine. Uh, it's easy to get seduced into to, to numbers from the other team, but how much do you do you focus on yourselves and and just trying to get better here and look at this as hey, we're playing an ace on series I and mean, this this is big. Yeah, um, you know the importance of this series is is we got to take it as the as the biggest series of the year. Um, you know, today Coach Jackson just said, don't worry about who you're playing, just focus on what you can control. And that's what we plan on doing is, you know, it could be UNC playing against us or it could be North Alabama, it could be anyone. And we're, we're going to take the same approach to, to any game and we're, we're expecting to win is what we're going to be doing. Sure makes it helpful when you're playing at home with beautiful weather too, doesn't it? I mean, two road game or two home games in your first 12. I mean, my goodness, it's got to be good to be home too, right? Yeah, uh, it's it does feel a lot more comfortable, but you know th- those road series are just as important, if not more important, than than home series. So if we're we're glad to be home, definitely. All right, Logan, we appreciate the time, and uh, we're looking forward to watching you in action here this weekend. All right, thank you. It's Flames first baseman Logan Matthew with us on this week's edition of the Flames Clubhouse Report. Stick around; we've got the head coach Scott Jackson joining us next. This broadcast of Liberty Flames Athletics is brought to you in part by Beacon Credit Union. Beacon Credit Union is a full-service financial institution offering a wide range of products and services. Having served Lynchburg and the surrounding area for over 75 years, our vision is to be the premier provider of quality financial services, a leader in our community, and the most progressive financial institution in our field. More information on Beacon Credit Union and all your banking needs is available online at mybcu.org. Equal housing lender, member NCUA. to the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report, presented by Fink's Jewelers. This week's show continues with the thoughts of Liberty head baseball coach Scott Jackson, presented by Beacon Credit Union. Coach, opening conference play here this weekend, doing it at home, that's got to be a great feeling. After 10 out of 12 on the road to start the season, but now it's conference time and it's it's really a new season, isn't it? Yeah, no, no question. I mean, you know, the, the first part of your question there, I mean, to be at home, for the weekend and it, you know, and it to be 70 degrees here this week while we're practicing. Uh, that's, that's, uh, I guess that's our reward, <laughs> if you will, for, <laughs> for being on the road, you know, 10 out of the first 12, uh, certainly excited to get conference play started. Um, I know, um, you know, for us, it's, it's always, um, you know, competitive in, in our league, not to mention our division. So, uh, to be able to, to start here at home and, and hopefully get settled in, uh, to, to league play is a good thing for us before, you know, we get another uh, non-conference weekend and then hit the road to, to Bellarmine and, and Kennesaw. So it's going to be important for us to, you know, to get going and to get our, our, our A-Sun play off on the right foot for sure. Well, you couldn't ask for it to be at a better time either because right now you're on a five-game winning streak and coming off a win over top 20 ball club in North Carolina on the road. So played that well on the road, now get to a familiar uh, place at your home ballpark. I mean, this is uh, no, nothing's ever, you know, you, you don't want to assume anything, but I mean, this is really as good a time as any to start, right? No, you're right. And we've played well. We've played better, um, you know, down the stretch here. I thought, you know, if you go back to UCF, we did some things with two outs and some big moments, you know, offensively. And, you know, I thought we've we've really done a good job early in innings with our bullpen of retiring the leadoff hitter. If you go back through the UCF series and then again, you know, the North Carolina game. Um, you know, those guys have really come out of there attacking and, and, and done a great job. So I, I like where um, where we're headed, I guess, if you will, uh, with with the way we're playing, with just some improvements. There's there's some some moments there where we have to be better. Uh, a couple big base running errors, you know, down at North Carolina that I thought, you know, gosh, is this going to come back and get us? Thankfully, it didn't. But, you know, you, you don't ask your kids to play perfect, but certainly with a little bit more awareness than where we were in some of those situations, um, you know, through the week. And that's what uh, that's what the process and coaching is all about is, is to try to eliminate as many of those as possible moving forward here. Head coach of the Flames, Scott Jackson, joining us. And to your point against North Carolina, once the bullpen got out there, four out of six uh, innings pitched, the leadoff man was retired. And that's a 
certainly a good way to keep the opponent off the scoreboard. I know they hit a couple of home runs down there, but uh, that's to be expected with their their lineup. They're going to get things going. But uh, when you look at uh, how your club is performing here coming into the weekend and uh, the way that your lineup is starting to put some runs on the board now, putting eight up against Carolina, eight up against USF or UCF, excuse me, how good do you feel about the way that the lineup is starting to, to come together? Yeah, I think the thing that I feel best about is that, you know, if you look back over, uh, I guess, probably the last four or five games, I mean, there's been, you know, there's been somebody in there, um, you know, that's different. Uh, if if it's not Logan Matthew, you know, it's great bets. If it's not great bets, it's, you know, it's Cam, you know, they're just a little bit of everything. Jake Wilson, Aaron Anderson, Brady right Gulikowski. Yeah, I mean, all those guys have had moments in the last four or five games, so it's not like you know, we're sitting there looking in the on deck circle, waiting for, you know, two or three different guys to come up in the middle of that order in order for us to be able to get something going or do some damage. So that's what I like best about, you know, where, where we've been and where we're going with our offense. Um, certainly great to see Will, you know, start to kind of get going a little bit um, for us to be good. As we talked about after that Carolina game, we know how important he is to the middle of our order. So, uh, it's always um, it's always a process of continuing to get better and staying self-aware with you know who you are and what you're getting to hit and how you can get better. I, you know, I, I know we've talked about this you know over the last couple of days, but our plate discipline, I mean, it's got to continue to improve. That's something that we've always kind of tried to have as a hallmark of our offense is you know we make you throw strikes and you know we haven't done that at the level that I'd like to over the last few games. So I've, I've got some video clips to show our players. Anytime you see it, uh, I think it resonates a little bit more. And so hopefully that'll help us here as we move into the weekend. It's going to be important for us to do that this weekend. Head coach of the Flames, Scott Jackson, joining us here. Uh, as we look at divisional play in the ASUN Conference, you mentioned that earlier. How much different is it going to be this year, knowing that you're going to have to play teams, in some cases twice, like North Alabama? You're going to get them in a three-game series again. I mean, that's a little bit – out of the ordinary, isn't it, for uh, for a regular season? Yeah, no, it is. And I remember doing it when I was a player. Um, you know, you, you I was actually a, a player at Campbell in the Transamerica. It was called the Transamerica Athletic Conference back then. It's now called the Atlantic Sun, where we are now. So I remember doing it back then. We had two divisions, um, you know, and you, you just – you really got to know the players at a high level, um, mm-hmm. you know, personally. I mean, you know, some of those kids at Georgia State that I played against, some of those kids at College of Charleston when they were in our division, um, you know, are guys that I, I still, you know, can email and, and text message or see to this day um, that are still involved with baseball, which was which was pretty cool. Um, would we like it to be different? Sure, we would. We'd, we'd love to be able to play everybody in this league and, you know, to be able to run through the entire league and, and see exactly what that looks like. But, you know, unfortunately, there's there's you know, there's cost containment. that's a priority for the league. And there's some things that we have to honor with, you know, the landscape of of the league with COVID. So it's going to be different. I'm just thankful we're going to play and and hopefully, you know, we can get more familiar with those opponents, which continues to help us have a little bit maybe of an, a competitive advantage. I know the same goes for them, but uh, I like familiarity when it comes to being able to do some things and plan for a weekend. Coach, when you look at the Lions, they have struggled to start the season. A program still in transition, going from Division Two to Division One. That's a very tough jump to make, and they're a program that's got a lot of experience with winning. So I know that that's really hard on Mike Keen, uh, taking his program to the next level. But when you look at them coming in here to this weekend, how much do you just focus on yourselves and and trying to get better? Yeah, I think you have to. I, I think there's some factors there that probably. Uh, not not everybody sees with uh, COVID and, you know, they 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 weren't able to play their first weekend, um, you know, and I think they had some activity paused. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, when, anytime you're in that situation, you know, it's going to be hard to get out of the gate and get going. Uh, I'm sure Mike's frustrated. I'm sure, you know, he knows, though, that, um, you know, this was kind of maybe to be expected that they would they, they would have, you know, maybe some some battles there that didn't go their way just because of where they were with, you know, what, with what was, you know, going on inside their program. So I, I don't know the details, but I know from my end of it, you know, I'm certainly as, um, you know, s- sensitive to that w- w- with those guys. Cause I, that would have been a tough situation for any of us, you know, that, that being said, I think anytime, you know, you, you have a chance to start conference play. Y- yeah. It's, it's, it's all about us and how we're going to protect our home turf and how important it is for us to be able to play well. 
Um, you can look at some of the numbers of your opponent or you can look at the record um, and you can you can fall into that trap if, if you want to. My job as a coach is to take care of our players and worry about us being able to execute and do the things that we know equals wins and, and a high probability of winning games. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll focus on that as we get into the week and we get through the weekend and we step back and say, OK, now, how can we, you know, make improvements off of what we've done? What we've done. So, you know, that that's kind of been my focus the the last, you know, the last four or five games. I haven't watched a ton on our opponents. Um, I've I've been more concerned about preparing our players and, you know, being able to make the adjustments we need to make to give ourselves a chance. And th- that formula has been okay, you know, up to this point. Yeah, and I, th- I think Bobby Cox used to say this. I've, I might have even used this with you before, but uh, you know, th- those teams that. You know, have lost four or five in a row or whatever. He said, no, heck no. I don't want to play those guys right now. Those are the ones that <laughs> yeah. either do or they're, they've, you know, they've got a little bit more of a chip on their shoulder coming into these things. So you got to, no you got to kind of be ready for that too. Yeah, no, no doubt. And that's when your awareness is heightened and that's when, you know, there's, there's probably a little bit more grit and, you know, doggone it, you know, this, this isn't going to happen again. Kind of like we talked about with Gibson, you know, yeah. on Sunday at, at UCF, you know, Pena hits the double to lead off the game and it's like, doggone it, I'm not I'm not doing this again. And, you know, the, the rubber meets the road, if you will. And, you know, you're going to go one way or the other. So, you know, you, that, that's exactly right. I mean, you you know, you have those teams that have that just that little extra motivation because, yeah, they want to get into the win column and they want to get going. Lastly here, Coach, let's talk about uh, the starting pitching matchup here on Friday night. Uh, Hunter Davidson for North Alabama, right-hander that's going to fill up the strike zone, uh, just attacks hitters early. And then uh, for you, you've got Trevor DeLate, who's uh, coming off a really good outing as well against uh, UCF. Uh, Should be a good Friday night matchup. Yeah, it should. I mean, you know, Davidson's numbers are good. He's their Friday night guy for a reason. Going to be in the strike zone and has a put-away pitch with his slider, um, you know, being – you know, being pretty doggone good based on, you know, what I've seen on video. So it's going to be important that, you know, we, we, we stay, you know, we stay ahead of things and, and control them. They're, they're going to, they're going to, you know, start runners. They're going to do, you know, some extra things because it's, you know, it's just been tough for them to score up to this point. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to retire that leadoff hitter. That's got to be a point of emphasis for us to kind of slow them down and then certainly to get out ahead of them. Um, you know, and give ourselves a lead to where, you know, hopefully we can combat some of that and slow them down a little bit. So um, hopefully that's, you know, the formula for us that's um, that's that's worked the most up to this point. And it's going to be in play on Friday with Trevor. And um, we know what we're going to get from him. That's for sure. So I'm looking forward to to watching him get after it again. All right, coach. We certainly appreciate the time. Good luck coming up here this weekend. All right, Nick. I appreciate you. And we always appreciate the time that head coach Scott Jackson gives us each week. His comments presented by Beacon Credit Union. Okay, let's take a look at the starting pitching matchups here for this weekend. Friday ball game, game one of the series. Flames will send the senior left-hander to the mound. Trevor DeLate coming off an excellent start against UCF last week. 1-1 one one on the year with a 4-8-9 ERA, making start number four. On the other side, it will be another strike thrower, right-hander Hunter Davidson. No record, two starts, a 1.42 ERA. Both of them have combined for just eight walks and 35 strikeouts in their five combined starts. So go up there ready to swing the bat on Friday night, fellas. A Saturday matchup will be a couple of left-handers. UNA will send Chase Best to the mound. Two starts, 0-2 record. It's not gone real well for him. He's given up 12 runs, 10 earned, and 10 innings pitched. Couple of home runs, three doubles. The opposition hitting 333 off of him. So Best has really been knocked around the lefty for UNA. Mason Meyer will go for Liberty, making his fourth start. He's one and one with a 377 earned run average. And then on Sunday in the series finale, a couple of right-handers, a couple of big right-handers. UNA will send the 6'4", 230-pound. Kyle Moore to the mound, 0-2 record in two starts. He's got a 7-0-4 ERA. He's given up 11 runs, only six earned in seven and two-thirds innings. Looks like his ball club's not giving him a whole lot of help behind him. On the other side, the Flames will go with a freshman right-hander, six foot four Trey Gibson, 1-2 with a 12-2-7 ERA, but he pitched exceptionally well this past Sunday against UCF, going five innings and a career-high six strikeouts for the right-hander. So Gibson against Moore is your matchup on Sunday. Weather-wise, we should be looking great for the weekend. 
wind. As Coach said, it's been in the 70s all week here in Lynchburg. 73 degrees your high on Friday, high of 67 on Saturday, and then a high of 66 on Sunday with very little chance of rain all three days. So should be in good shape as far as the weather goes. I know the Flames have had to play double headers each of the last two weekends. It would be nice to play three games in three days in a traditional format here this weekend if we can. And here's how you can follow this weekend. All three games will be televised on ESPN+. Plus, and, of course, live radio coverage will be available to you each day on LibertyFlames.com. Saturday's ball game is also scheduled to be on the radio at 90.9 FM, the light WQLU in Lynchburg. So that's it. Liberty and North Alabama coming your way this weekend. Hope you will join us on the Liberty Flames Sports Network. We're out of time on this week's edition of the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report presented by Fink's Jewelers. Once again, we thank our guests, first baseman Logan Matthew and the head coach of the Flames, Scott Jackson. Till next time, my name is Nick Pierce saying enjoy the baseball this weekend and so long, everybody. You've been listening to the Liberty Flames Clubhouse Report presented by Fink's Jewelers. For more on Flames baseball, check out LibertyFlames.com. You can also follow the team on Twitter and Instagram at Liberty Baseball and on Facebook at Liberty Flames Baseball. The Flames Clubhouse Report is an exclusive presentation from Van Wagner on the Liberty Flames Sports Network.